join me in five minutes. In Jesus' name. A few seasons ago, pay attention now. Uh, for your own benefit. Anyway, whether you pay attention or not, we are past the season of asking people to pay attention. A few seasons before now, God began to show me some things. You know, when God said, I have answered your prayer, you have to pay attention to the structures through which he intends to enforce that answer. And many times, people are not intelligent. They are not intelligent with the things that God is doing around their life and the things that he has placed around their life. The implication is that even when God has answered your prayer, you will not know how that prayer is being answered. Let me give you an example. Somebody comes and says, um, Father, show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. And then God began to show you mercy because um, mercy is what goes ahead and makes sure that it takes care of your insufficiency in knowledge, insufficiency in strength, and insufficiency in wisdom, and even in capacity. Huh? He takes care of it, not in such a way that nothing should be done about the matter, but in such a way that it either brings you to a place where you are able to do what you are supposed to do, or it triggers somebody to fill up the quota that it takes for God to intervene. Have you been in a situation where nothing is happening and you say, God, show me mercy and God intervene. And you say you did not do anything that is just the mercy of God. There is nothing like that. Though. Just because you did not do anything doesn't mean that nothing was done. Can you hear me? Yes, now, something was done, probably not by you, but something was what? Done. So it can be a case of accident. And in that situation, you have not prayed for three days. And you even rose up and, and wanted to say, I bind the powers. And your, your voice was dry. You know, you know sometimes. For, you see this way you are, you, you just put fire everywhere. There are days you want to raise your voice like that. It won't pass this in. You know that all these things you are saying is not working. Meanwhile, when you say it three or four times, you will not say, Father, let me tell you the truth. Uh, his mercy I need now. Uh, his mercy. So he will now go to somebody that is connected to you that have a power line and just put pressure on the person. And the person will be groaning and praying. You will not know that the prayer he's praying is for somebody else. Meanwhile, that's how God shows you mercy. That is why Every person, you have to also understand the systems of mercy. Because God cannot just show you mercy in limbo. There must be somebody around you, somebody you know, somebody you have a relationship with, that you can draw from his resource in the day of mercy. So around your life, you do not have at least seven intercessors around your life. On the day of mercy, nothing will come. How will the mercy come? Can you get this simple explanation? So, I come in my life and God began to tell me about the, the way he intends to preserve men in these last days. And there is something I've been trivializing. And it's this table. I will show you something. What God showed me was so profound to the point that I now take communion in my house every day. It is that profound. I take communion, no, I do it, but not, not on a daily basis, not like that. There are things people like us know you don't know. That's why, that's why you are waiting until Satan has now brought you down. Once, you know, this communion table is all purpose. Say after me, all purpose. How many of you have heard of all purpose machine gun? This thing is all purpose. It is all purpose because when it is properly participated in by revelation, it has the capacity to minister to your spirit, soul, and body. 
and he has capacity to minister to circumstances that has to deal with you as a person and even external matters. Are you getting the point? Yes, to the point that a man that participated in this where even demons cannot afflict you in the night. A young man met me and said that when he wants to sleep, demons come and, come and molest him. I told him, after praying, take communion. He took communion, the demons stopped coming. Because communion emphasizes covenant and bond. And the, the basis upon which those spirits that molest people in the night come is the basis of charters that we are caught. It's on the basis of covenants, agreement. You might not know when, but it happened anyway. Huh? So when you bring this one, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And he was talking about the blood that was shed and the body that was broken. If you are with me, say amen. amen. So it will mean that, that this is a facilitator of the covenant, the new covenant that is in my blood. So there can be two covenants around trying to function at the same time. One has to give way for another. So you take communion and put it. As soon as you take that communion, the demon will be waiting for loop because actually those spirits, they function with loopholes and weaknesses within your soul that you have not been able to trace and deal with. See, when a man gives himself to certain kind of lifestyle for long, it is not just about the fact that demons come and afflict you. You weaken the power of your soul. The soul of a man is shaped in such a way that there are walls in it. There are gates in it. Eh? So when you engage in certain things, one of the things that happen is that the walls of your soul is weakened. So that by the time you want to say, no, I don't want to do it again, the soul lacks the capacity. Your will is not strengthened enough to resist the powers that is trying to get you down. So when you take communion for the moment, it is not the permanent solution. No. Let me have let me tell you now so that before I go further, because some people people like shortcuts. And as I'm saying this, they are hearing upside down. What they are hearing now is that they should stop praying and fasting and then use communion and cover it. People hear upside down. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that this is a support cast. In case you finish praying and you were not able to touch all the matters you are supposed to touch pertaining to your preservation pertaining to your healing sometimes I wake up like this and I feel some signs in my body I feel some signs yes I feel some signs what I do is that I quickly rush to communion I bless it I say father I, I know that this is your body broken for me this is the blood that was shed and hell cannot withstand it. When it touched the ground, it break rank. The same blood. I come in the name and I consecrate this. Let the same life and power be made available. And I put it in my mouth. The same way hell breaks, the sickness in your body will break. Yes. The same way the ground cannot contain the power of the life that is in the blood, it can't contain it. Oh my God, we survive by the life of God when it touches anything that is dead. And in case you don't know other gates of life that is enshrined in the scripture, I bring you one, and that is the table. Because many times we will be searching for the gates of life, we will not be able to find it. You pray, it's not working, you fast, it's not working, you do this, it's not. Dead. You know life is not generated. This is the table here. There is life here. And I tell you, the revelation of the table, once you have it, it stays with you. It's one of the revelations you need to die with. Huh? Oh my God. It was the Peter that said, if he dies and you serve in communion, he doesn't wake up. That means he has actually died. This is the my body. Jesus is saying, my body broken for you. of my new covenant the power of the blood is in the life that is in it and the life that is in the blood of Jesus is the life of God himself so when you bring the devil you bring the blood and the bread uh, the elements that is represented and you present it before God uh, uh, 
um, in theology there is what they call transubstantiation it is you are a catholic that's why you are doing your hair like this it's majorly catholics that will know this because they gave themselves to it there is what is called the doctrine of transubstantiation even though i don't believe your basis of transubstantiation because your basis is just the prayer on it but the scriptural basis for transubstantiation is revelation time okay let me just read it if you're with me say amen, amen. growth we melt in people's body today cancers will disappear demonic attacks will disappear weaknesses in your soul will be mended up some of you here you are weak in your soul but you don't know yes your weakness is in the soul huh? and you need something that can travel there and begin to walk if we allow Satan to walk more you'll be too weak to defend yourself in the day of adversity so we need something to show you up so that you can stand and build yourself so that by the time Satan comes again you have gained advantage see we some demands that you study and understand the structures that God has put in place for the in the kingdom to make for your advantage to make for your preservation to make for your provision to make for your for for your winning for your victory you see these elements are tokens of the victory that Jesus has obtained it is a testimony that Jesus actually won. It is a testimony that his power is alive. So if there is a day we come and we are in doubt that Jesus rose, we come to the communion table and we stand and we say, we know Jesus died. Come alive, all ye elements. Come alive, all ye elements. So how was he able to receive this revelation in such a way that it, it, it transformed, it approximated from mere instruction given to him to something he needed to communicate to the body of Christ. He was talking with such authority. But the day that they brought the, the, that episode took place, Paul was not there. I said, how did Paul enter into this? Entered into it so much that he's now teaching men. And he told them, these are the seeds of the Lord. I pray today that men will be the seed of the Lord. Let me tell you, what men of God do is to bless the elements. What you received of the, of the Lord is a revelation. That which I have received of the Lord. And I bring to you today, that which Paul received and gave to the body, which we also receive, we give to you that in the communion is power that can give everything that is not of God. Let me tell you, the life of God is yet to go to death and all the workings of sin and death in your system, but in your spirit, but in your soul, but in your body. When the life of God comes, then death begins to come back, then Satan begins to come back. There is nothing that can stop the life of God. It is coming from a realm that is superior to death. It is coming from a realm that can withstand the powers. The Bible says, even the disciples, the apostles, testified of Jesus. He said that death could not hold him captive. It was because of the life. The life that went to Hades and Hades shook. We invoke that life today. Received of the Lord, what have you received? Pray for one minute. Ask Jesus, I want to receive something today, and what I want to receive is a revelation. For some of you that have it, you need a higher, a higher. Some of you, you only work in sickness. I say it can work in your business, it can work in your family. Some of you need to come back home and share communion with your family. Can you cry? I've my life. 
hand of the Lord that which also I delivered to you that the Lord Jesus the same night which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you please do in remembrance of me oh my God after the same manner also he took the cup and when he has he had sobbed saying this is the this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as of as ye drink it in remembrance of me verse 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he come 27 wherefore 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 whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord on what did it shall be guilty of the body and blood of the lord next verse but let every man examine himself so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 for he that eateth and drinketh on what he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body let me see the next verse keep this part not discerning the Lord's body for this cause so all this writing is to make a statement and that statement is what for this cause for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep that word sleep is that is physical death do you know what this scripture is saying it is saying that the incapacity to design the body of christ is the reason why a believer can just come out and be sick the scripture is trying to say the resources that makes for your health is within the body huh? show me 29 the resources that makes for for this way I'm looking. Show me 30 quickly. Okay. Pay attention and play the sound or come out of that place. Where is your mind? What are you playing? Okay. Is that how to play it? I sing. Be singing and be playing what you're playing. For this cause many are weak you are weak mark the reason why you are weak is because you have not designed the body i will show you why and seek because you have not designed the body and sleep or die because you have not what designed the body let me tell you everything you suffer the weakness is in your work with god eh? the challenges you face you are facing it because you have not designed the body the body is structured in such a way that it functions what is it called in biology is it not homeostasis it has the capacity to to nullify everything by itself bring equilibrium so if at a point a man suffers something it will mean that there is something within the body he has not taken advantage of and the reason why he has not taken advantage of it is because he has not what designed the body so somebody can be here and be suffering with it. his prayer life is going down meanwhile within the body is a prayer machine so what is that person's problem is it that god has not provided something to succor for his challenge no he has not what designed the body somebody can be sick and he has not designed the body he will die of his sickness until i found out that benihim was sick uh, and then big big men of god maurice Orulo, all of them we are praying for him maurice Orulo is sick benihim all of them we are praying for him I found out that these men understand what it means for you to be ministered to by the body. Eh? Just because when a man, a man of God stands to minister to people, he ministers by his anointing. And the anointing that God placed upon a life is fundamentally unselfish. Meaning that the anointing upon you is for others. So many times when you are anointed, have you not ministered healing when you are sick? And you went back sick and went and took drug meanwhile miracles happened everywhere 
it will mean that your anointing is unselfish it is supposed to minister to others so but when you design the body when you are sick you go for another anointing and another anointing will succor you in that day of challenge but you have not designed the body that's why you are sick you have not designed the body that's why you are weak imagine if you have seven men that are your friends members of the body that are born in like coals of heaven is it that kind of man that will backslide you don't know you have not designed the body you are just moving around you are in church but you have not designed the body let me tell you many of the things you are looking for might not be your father he can be your brother eh? many of the time the resources you need 70 percent or 50 is in your brother it's not in your father and if you have not designed 